Welcome to New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. I'm your host, Sean. Today, I wanted to talk about the weird stuff that's going on in the news. How many train wrecks? I can count three that have had chemicals that have caused bad things to happen. The one, the biggest one, I think, is in uh, Ohio, in Lebanon, Ohio, where they have phosgene, <laughs> vinyl chloride, hydro- hydrogen chloride, that have reached into the air and if you didn't know I think I mentioned this that phosgene is a chemical agent that was used in World War I as a chemical weapon uh, to kill people and this is being let off by no other than the EPA who had basically Chernobyl Lebanon, Ohio um, fast forward a little bit there's another one that derailed in Arizona there was another one in Texas, I think. Holy crap. You know, to quote, <clears throat> or kind of quote, one of my favorite TV characters, Leroy Jethro Gibbs from NCIS. I haven't watched them in a while because uh, I just haven't had the time. And they once Abby Shuto left, or Polly Perrette, the character that she played, I um, kind of quit watching the show because it wasn't as cool. But Jethro said there's no such thing as a coincidence. There's too many things that are lining up. It seems very interesting. And my uh, black-pilled friend, who's a very good friend of mine and a very good creator in another way, um, he's very black-pilled, but I understand he's black-pilled sometimes, uh, especially lately. Um, You cannot look at what's going on in the news and go, if you have any any ties to coincidence uh, to conspiracies you ever read them just for fun you ever believe any um, you can't look at this stuff and see that this isn't some larger plan or at least it looks like it you can't keep hitting the same nail on the head or be too on the nose and you don't make some assumptions here or make some logical conclusions uh, well, how does that tie into the 2A well the same time that all this stuff is happening at the national level there's a huge push for assault weapons ban at our state level there's a ton of them uh, by the way if you have a free chance there check out new mexico shooting sports association again they have the links for the meeting that's going to happen at 1 oh, 1 30 today in room 305 in the roundhouse uh, you can actually testify on the zoom link that they provide that will allow you to actually make your voice heard. Today's bills, they're, they're looking at our House Bill 100 and House Bill 101. These two bills have to do with a 14-day waiting period and a uh, outright ban on us, quote-unquote, assault weapons. So what do I believe? I agree with my black-pilled friend that I, uh, I'm mentioning because I know he's listening and that's why I'm doing that. Uh, <laughs> that they, uh, this is totally unconstitutional. All of these bills are unconstitutional. Freemen don't ask permission. And with the push, dramatic push, you're seeing it on the media, on all media, social media. If you get to our governor's website or um, the Secretary of State, they have all kinds of bills right now, or they were showing them and highlighting them specifically about gun control. So this is a state push at the governmental level. Um, So this is not something to be weighed very lightly. This now states that they're actively looking at uh, disarming people. And they're using polls that they're finding, um, such as Gallup, who are saying that a political opinion has changed about gun bans. Now, this happens every time there's a shooting. If you've noticed, there's been a spike in shootings in the last uh, month. We're seeing it highlighted more so in media. I don't think there's an actual uptick in it. In reality, I think what is actually happening is they're highlighting these stories so that people start watching it and start changing public opinion. After seeing the Twitter files drop and seeing what was in it and seeing the content that people have created that actually highlight this, it is 100% fact now that the government, both Trump's government 
and Biden's government has colluded with social media groups and media groups to curtail speech or to set the narrative. And that's what I believe they're doing now in the two-way. And you can't see all these coincidences line up without you starting to think that there is a larger plan that they're trying to push. Now, again, I've always read conspiracies because I find them entertaining, but there's always a kernel of truth to them at some point. And it looks like more and more, and after the last three years in the United States, you can't say that the uh, conspiracy guys don't have some sort of cue in onto some of the stuff that's been happening into the country. It sucks that that brands some of them or labels them or stigmatizes them as being some sort of misinformation stuff. Their information may not be complete, but it's still information. It needs something that the public, all of us, need to look at and see if there's any merit to what they're saying. Um, I don't believe in the the China conspiracy that China is going to come in the United States or come to the United States. If we're at war with China, it's it's an asymmetric war, and this is the type of stuff that they would do, like derail trains or like set us against each other in the United States. That's what the Russians would do too. They don't have the forces. They don't have the ability to land forces here in the United States. Um, they, their arm, their navy. While it's the lar- largest blue navy in the world right now, it doesn't have the capability of reaching past fifteen hundred miles at one time. Um, they have to go, which means they can barely make it past the first island chain, which means they would have to make it past South Korea, India, Japan, Australia, oh, and the United States. Any one of those people. Don't aren't good friends with the Chinese. The Chinese have pissed in everyone's Cheerios enough that that's probably not a good thing to try to go start anything. And after you look at the stuff that's been going on in the rest of the world, you look at what's going on demographically. I need to go to Germany before the uh, next two years for sure um, because their demographic profile has cratered. And with their industry being based heavily on Germany's natural, not Germany, Russian natural gas resources that they don't have access to, they're going to see an industrial deindustrialization at their industrial plants soon. And it would be better to go see Germany while I still can and while they're above board, so to speak, and before World War III fully kicks into high gear. Um, looking around with what we're seeing, we're probably already in World War III. Um, we're just seeing an asymmetric war instead of a set peace war. Asymmetric warfare, if you don't know, is a guerrilla type warfare. You subvert leadership, you subvert institutions, you subvert anything you can to cause disruption and eventually fall of your enemy. That's where the 2A comes back into this. You have to be defensible for yourself you have to be able to depend on yourself for everything for the la- the one thing we've learned after all the stuff that's happened in the last three years is that you cannot rely on the government in any way shape or form for a hundred percent of anything um, I say that and I put my money where my mouth is because I left a job because I of my values my core values of how what I believe and I no longer believed in what I was doing. I think that reality, it was more so I was burnt out than anything else. And while I may have some criticisms of them, I still support education in general. I see that what they should do is actually start opening it up to the market because the best teachers would probably leave public ed if they got paid more and I think they could be paid a hell of a lot more doing something like private tutoring for pods that would make a huge difference in the education system in the United States and probably improve every aspect of what our kids need for the future I say that having served 12 years in the core as I put it for K-12s 
there's a lot of talent in K-12s. There's a lot of innovation there, all married to something that is not open to the market, and it's not open for competitive competition in any way. Um, in fact, you're seeing a downturn. There's more teachers retiring because they're boomers, and they're having a hard time getting people to do it. The question I would have is why would you teach nowadays? Given all the political environment, all the other crap that's going on, all the demonization that even I have done, um, why would you teach? And I understand that I have a soft spot for K-12s uh, mostly because I was a product of them. I'm a product of the system that was, you know, used to be in place. I graduated from Farmington High School. I graduated from a New Mexico-sponsored uh, community college. I worked in an industry that was adjacent to the government, if not the government in one way or another. And I understand that some people will sit back on their laurels and say, it sucks, I can't leave my job because I need this. Well, I drew my retirement so I could start my new business. Speaking of which, today I have registered and got the ball rolling. Today I will finish the last bits of equipment ordering for it. I have registered CMPMC Limited. So what is CMPMC? Cottonmouth Product Manufacturing Concern. I couldn't get into the 2A to manufacture. Um, with the capital I have, I just didn't have enough capital. But there is a lower barrier of entry to getting into the cannabis industry. Uh, the cannabis industry means that you, you can't have guns on premise anywhere, any way, shape, or form. That's why I found a, f a facility that I could work out of to manufacture. Um, Cottonmouth or CMPMC is a services industry for the cannabis industry. So my industry, what we have is we have our manufacturer first. So we have three product lines, introductory product lines as we finish up getting our facility in better line and get it another license because any business in the United States, especially in New Mexico, has to get their cut some way, and anytime you have to get licensing or anything else, and that's one of the licensings I, uh, I don't have yet, which is for um, food handling yet, or like commercial food handling. To manufacture edibles and things like that, you have to have a food license. That one, I don't have the facility set for a commercial kitchen, so I could pass health inspection. You know, government's got to get their cut. Once I get my next facility up, that one will have a commercial kitchen for that type of stuff. Why did I choose cannabis? Well, there's a couple of things I, I believe in. One is ending prohibition and any government of any type of way, shape, or form of control on anything. This is a way that I could stick it to the government while using New Mexico government to do it. Uh, secondly, or... Well, that was number one. Number two, or number three, whatever, is that <laughs> um, it still supports K-12s because there's a line item here in New Mexico that actually gives cannabis straight uh, funds straight to them from the general fund. Since they're penalizing oil and natural gas, which eventually they're going to have to realize they can't, um, this is another way to help support those things that I still believe in in some way, shape, or form. As much as I've demonized a lot of the police and law enforcement with the crime stuff that's going on, this is another way to support them. Um, that's still the last remnants of the status in me is that I will help support them as much as I have to. And since I have to pay taxes on a business, I might as well pick a business that's going to go directly to line items to do that stuff. The last thing with this was that I was thinking about is that you can't own firearms if you have this business or if you use this. It makes you a prohibited person. That's why I have a separate facility where my home is, is and officially I do not use this stuff. That would make me a prohibited person. Freeman don't ask permission. 
I am trying to set up those who are recreationally use it or med- medicinally use it to set to do everything they can with the product I'm going to produce. Um, not just the production of a product, though. We are a services industry, uh, a services business. So while we are starting in the manufacturing square, I have IT services that I can offer to cannabis growers, dispensaries, um, any of those focused for them, including web stuff. I'm getting web developers with me right now. I have access to growers for consultation to other growers. We're going to offer our products and services. Uh, so if we manufacture from the, our partner, who is DB Organics, we will manufacture using their uh, grows as a source input for our initial product lines. And they will always be part of our product offering. But the goal is to offer our products and services to every cannabis grower and dispensary in New Mexico and then nationwide. We have uh, additive manufacturers already on our team. So we can produce uh, prototype things for anything you need as well as they can produce uh, swag like stickers or hats or any of that type of stuff to help stabilize our margin lines as we produce, go forward. So CMPMC is, uh, it stands for Cotton Mouth Product Manufacturing Concern. And why we said concern is that we intend, or I intend, there I have partners in this, and I also have my family who are partners in this now, that are going to be marching forward with this. We plan on branching this out as far as we can to anywhere we can. And when it finally gets legalized nationwide, we will stand up our e-retailer and sell directly to dispensaries at first. Then we will uh, market our products and services directly to the consumer when that one, once we've stabilized all that stuff so we can verify ID. Um, that's one of the reasons why I like looking at standing up a web store for that the last thing with that is that um, this should help end this and as I've talked about on the podcast in prohibition what I have talked about on this podcast is how I've been envious of the cannabis industry how they've gotten in um, to being normalized and that is something that I plan on using some of the proceeds from this to give back to the community and give back to the 2A community uh, actual donations to places like FPC, GOA, NMSSA. Um, These organizations need funding streams and I hope to basically maximize freedom as much as I can across the country starting with New Mexico. So there's where my big announcement is. Um, I do this in an economic environment where people are worried about if they're going to be able to get bread for the table. But I do this knowing that uh, alcohol and other recreational substances usually tend to be stable even during market downturns. And I don't look, I'm not looking at trying to make billions of dollars right away. Um, I'm going to offer the best product I can, the best services I can to my customers and to our partners so that we make a name for ourselves and that we continue maximizing freedom as much. And I cannot say how much that Palmetto State Armory, the founder of Palmetto State Armory, has inspired me to launch something that he may not agree with yet, I'm guessing he probably would because it is maximizing freedom as much as I can, is to maximize freedom everywhere. I do not support open use um, like if you're what you see in Seattle and California. I think if you have a boutique or a winery, wine or a dispensary type atmosphere and you had a patio for the use of such recreational substances, I have no problems with that. With that, I also 
advocate wholly responsible use of this product. Uh, the products and stuff we put out, I see myself as um, trying to be what the can what the Sam Adams guys were when they were designing and getting their brewery off the ground for the cannabis industry. Um, that, like I said, they don't match with the 2A yet, but this is a way I could start a business that's separate from the 2A that will help support my advocacy for the 2A, but not restricting my 2A rights. At least it shouldn't, because this business is manufacturing and I have no firearms or nothing tied to that and there will never be firearms there unless they legalize it nationwide and remove remove that restriction from this it also ends the stigma and if we can end the stigma around cannabis then we can end the stigma around the two-way so as you can see it aligns with my values my core and cap values um, that i have that i'm going to use the government as much as i can in the margins and lit work and live in the margins enough to make my company great, make my podcast great, and make the country a better place by maximizing freedom. Like, share, subscribe, be great.